as much as I would like the weighted chin up to take over as the most popular upper body exercise in high training programs, the fact remains the bench press is still the king. And I don't see another exercise dethroning it anytime soon. Despite its popularity, the barbell bench press does come with its fair share of problems, which makes the dumbbell bench press a better choice for certain athletes in certain situations. To help you figure out which of these two bench press variations you should use in your training, we'll pit them against each other in five categories. Loading, range of motion, how the movement lends itself for building maximal strength, how it fares for muscle growth, and potential injury risk. Based on these five factors, we can then decide which variation is best for you and your goals. So let's get right into it. Factor one, loading. Both the barbell and dumbbell bench press are easy to overload and can be loaded heavy. If you're having reservations about how heavy you can really go with the dumbbells, here's a famous video of eight time Mr. Olympia, Ronnie Coleman, dumbbell benching a pair of 200 pounders. Having said that, there are a few issues with dumbbells. When the weight gets challenging enough, kicking the dumbbells into starting position can get almost impossible. You have two options here. Either learn to set up efficiently or ask a spotter to help you get set. So you don't waste valuable energy trying to get the weights up for your first rep. You don't have this issue with a barbell because you pull the bar out of the rack at arm's length. A bigger problem, however, is that dumbbells are very limiting for making steady weight increases. At most gyms, once the 70 pounders no longer present a challenge, you cannot go up to 72 or 73. It's straight to 75 or even 80, which can turn out to be too much too soon. So unless you got access to dumbbells that go up in one or two pound increments, for which you'd either have to lift at an amazing gym that has invested in such dumbbells or attach your own small magnetic weights on the dumbbell called plate mates, you're stuck with five pound weight increases every time, which is really a 10 pound jump considering you're using two arms. That may not sound like much, but when you're reasonably strong, you will find that going from a pair of 90 pounders to the 95s is quite the jump. To be exact, it's a 5.5% jump, which equals going from 225 pounds to 237 on the barbell. It's too much for the body to handle at once. With the barbell, you can increase the weight in smaller increments. Most gyms, thankfully, have 2.5 pound plates, so you'd go from 225 to 230, a much more manageable increase of just 2%. Also, if you carry your own micro plates in your gym bag, like I do, you can go from 225 to 226 or 227 using those. So for overloading the movement with manageable weight increases, the barbell bench press takes the cake. Let's talk about range of motion next. If you have seen competitive powerlifters bench press, some of them manage to wiggle themselves into a position where the bar travels only a few inches from chest to lockout. For us outside of the sport of powerlifting, it looks ridiculous, but it's allowed in competition, so you would be a fool not to take advantage of it. Anyway, we're athletes, not powerlifters, so we don't concern ourselves with such gimmicks. We're going to use large ranges of motion. Still, even though we're not focusing on minimizing the distance the bar must travel from your chest to lock out, you'll still want to arch your back and lift your chest up a reasonable amount for stability to tuck your elbows in and use an optimal bar path. For this reason, the range of motion is smaller with a barbell compared to dumbbells. With DBs, you cannot arch as much. And also, if you're using a neutral or semi-neutral grip, which is best for shoulder health, the weights will travel over a larger distance since the contact point on your chest in the bottom position is lower. So to recap, somewhat limited range of motion on barbell bench versus dumbbells. This brings us to factor number three, strength gains. While you can build a strong chest with dumbbells, they are limited. For maximal strength development, you must train with low reps, one to three, one to five. It's not really feasible to use dumbbells for that. The lowest I would go is five repetitions. You'll notice that when you try to go for doubles or triples with dumbbells, often you'll fail to get the weights up into position to start your set like I mentioned before. Even if you manage to do that, your reps will be ugly grinders. So no question here, when your goal is to get as strong as possible, barbell bench wins. For muscle growth, 
things get more interesting. For me, I have found that dumbbells and weighted dips produce better chest development than the barbell bench. Probably thanks to the larger ranges of motion and the greater chest pumps I get from those two exercises. You may find the opposite is true for you, in which case go ahead and keep the barbell bench in your program. I would list muscle growth as a tie between the two. The fifth and final factor, risk of injury. Any exercise you do in the gym has potential benefits and also potential risks. The barbell bench press is notorious for messing up people's shoulders. Bad technique is by far the biggest reason for that. I have lost count of hockey players who come to me complaining about shoulder pain and how they cannot barbell bench press at all because of it. Fast forward a few weeks on my training program where I teach you how to bench correctly and I fix your muscular imbalances that cause the pain and lo and behold, you can now barbell bench press without issues. Aside from shoulder injuries, pec tears also happen in the barbell bench press, but not really in athletes. Probably because the resistance isn't that high to begin with and guys have a healthy sense of self-preservation not to attempt loads that can literally break. Whereas in powerlifting, the weights get so heavy and guys are all about setting personal best at any cost that they push beyond what their body can handle and that's when you can tear your pec. The dumbbell bench press, on the other hand, is pretty much injury proof. I have never heard of anyone busting their shoulder or chest using dumbbells. I'm not saying it cannot happen, but it's exceedingly rare. We sort of covered the reasons before, but let me spell it out for you. Because you cannot really train for max strength with dumbbells, you're stuck lifting in the 5 to 8, 8 to 12, or even higher rep ranges. Usually, injuries don't happen with moderate loads as long as your technique is at least acceptable. And by moderate, I'm talking about 80% or less of your one rep max. Also, pressing with flared elbows, which is why a lot of guys develop shoulder issues in the first place, is much more common when using a bar because the bar puts you in a fixed position. Dumbbells let you tweak your elbow angle to find the best and healthiest position to press from. So this round goes to the dumbbell bench press. If you're worried about shoulder injury at all or you have pre-existing shoulder problems you don't want to aggravate, then dumbbells are the way to go. Now that we have covered the five factors, loading, range of motion, strength, muscle, and injury, Let's bring this discussion home. In my opinion, every hockey player should learn how to bench press with a barbell correctly and get strong in that lift. What is strong? If you can do one and a half times your body weight, so 120 kilos for a player weighing 80 kilos, that's enough to play hockey at any level. But if I'm working with an older athlete or someone who is more banged up, we don't want to take unnecessary risks when they got a six or seven figure contract on the line. I can mix the barbell bench press from your program and just have you dumbbell bench with pretty much the same results as far as overall muscularity and upper body pressing strength goes. Okay, if we tested you on the barbell bench, you might be a few kilograms off compared to what you would be able to lift by keeping the barbell bench press in your routine. But is that really a deal breaker? No. Summing up, use both the barbell and dumbbell bench press to build your body. Once you have spent a few years under the bar, you're strong, muscular, and you know what works. You know how to train for continued progress, then you can make the decision. Do I want to really push my barbell bench press to max heights and maybe take some risk on while chasing a bigger bench? Or do I care more about longevity and my physique rather than pure numbers, in which case the dumbbell bench press should be your go-to option. As for what to watch next, check out this workout so you can build an NHL body. And this one about strength standards for hockey players. How strong should you really be to play your best game? Thank you for watching. For more great training and nutrition tips, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, and I'll catch up with you soon.